You need to schedule a meeting with several people, but you know at least some of them don't keep their Outlook calendar up to date, so scheduling assistant isn't going to be helpful in this scenario. Rather than sending a bunch of emails back and forth trying to figure out what time works for all of the people that need to attend, you can use scheduling polls to suggest multiple times and dates and then let people vote. I have navigated to my Outlook account and we're going to start the scheduling poll from a new email. The first thing that you need to do is add at least one name to the two line. In this scenario, I will add a few names. If you add a name to the CC line, that person will be considered optional for the meeting. If you add a name to the BCC line, the scheduling poll will ignore that name. Next, you must type something in the subject line. If I go to more options at the top of the screen, you can see that scheduling polls is grayed out. Once I type the subject line and click enter, the option will become available. Let's click scheduling poll to get started. This option replaces an Outlook add-in called find time, but they're very similar. From the pane on the right side of the screen, you can see that the time will default to your computer's time zone. The default meeting is 30 minutes. You can click the drop down to change the time increment, but you must choose from the list. You cannot enter your own time increment. By default, you will only see suggested times during normal meeting hours. If you toggle this off, you will see additional suggestions. Just in case you're wondering where the normal meeting hours come from, you can go into your Outlook settings and then select calendar and view, and you will see that in this case, my meeting hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The poll will default to the current date. To suggest additional dates and times, click the calendar icon in the date field and choose whichever one makes sense for your scenario. I'm going to choose the 19th. Now I can see a list of times. You will know if the potential meeting participants are available by the people icon with the green check mark. If someone from the to or CC line is unavailable, there will be a people icon with an X. This is a test account, so everyone is available. Notice if I hover over the people icon to get a list of names, Patty Fernandez is not on the list because she is on the BCC line. Click on any time to select it for the scheduling of poll. A message appears at the bottom of the pane letting you know how many have been selected. You can choose times from a different date by changing the choice in the date field. Then I will click a couple of additional choices. Now I have five options for my coworkers to choose from. With that done, click on Next. On the next page, you can see the selected times for both dates. There are three for the 19th and two for the 20th. If this is going to be an in-person meeting, fill out the location field. Notice that Outlook will automatically create a Teams meeting, but you can toggle this off. Now let's look at the meeting options. Most of them will be on by default. I will quickly go over each one. The first is schedule when the attendees reach a consensus. This will automatically schedule the meeting when all required attendees have voted and a common time is found. If there are multiple times, the earliest one will be chosen. People on the CC line are optional, so they can vote, but if they say no to a time and everyone else says yes, the meeting will be scheduled. The next is hold times on my calendar. For scheduling polls, the hold is only for the organizer and not the attendees. When the meeting is scheduled, all holds will be removed. Next, we have notify me about poll updates. This will send an email each time someone votes as well as when the meeting has been scheduled. Next, you can require people to authenticate before voting and verify their identity. The last option is turned off by default. This will lock the poll so that attendees cannot suggest additional times or add additional people to the poll. Choose whichever options best suit your business processes. Now click on Create Poll. This will finalize the poll and insert it into the email. At the bottom of the Scheduling Poll pane, you have the option to view poll details. It will take you to the Scheduling Poll dashboard where you can verify all of the information. Notice that there are voting options next to each time. They are all marked as yes because as the organizer, Outlook assumes that I would not have selected a time when I could not attend. 
To the right is a column where you will see the votes of the attendees when they start to respond to the poll. For now, it is all question marks. The poll is ready. If desired, you can enter an additional message to add context to the meeting poll, and then click Send. I have navigated to Nestor's Outlook account so that we can see what the voting looks like from an attendee's point of view. Nestor received an email from me for the end of year planning. When I click on the email, you will see the scheduling poll embedded in the body of the email where Nestor has the option to vote on the poll. When Nestor clicks on vote, the scheduling poll dashboard will open in another window. He can see the details of the meeting and the voting options. There are three choices. Select preferred if you have a time that works best for you. Click yes if you are available to attend at a specific time, even if it's not your favorite time to attend, and click no if you are not available to attend at all. Nestor is going to fill in the last couple of options for the poll and then click on vote. Then you will get a floating dialog box letting you know that your votes were submitted. Based on the options I selected when setting up the poll, I am receiving an email as the organizer letting me know that a new vote has been submitted. The email will specify who has voted and then you can scroll through and see all of the choices that they made. Now, if I wanna see all of the votes for everyone that I sent the poll out to, I can find that by clicking on the view poll button, which would take us back to the scheduling poll dashboard that I showed you earlier. Let's jump forward and say that everyone voted and there's a time that worked for everyone. As the organizer, you will receive an email saying that your poll has reached a consensus, the meeting has been scheduled and an invite was sent to all of the attendees. If we go back to my Outlook calendar, you can see that the meeting was scheduled and all of the holds have been removed. Now let's look at one last scenario. I created a second poll to show what happens when you do not reach a consensus. What I can do is I can go to any of the emails that I receive about this poll and click on the view poll button. This will take me back to the scheduling dashboard. Here I can review the votes and choose the one that works best for the most participants. Click the schedule meeting button for your choice to manually schedule the event. Your Outlook calendar will open with a meeting invite window that has the details from the poll. Make any changes if necessary and then click on send. You will see a floating dialog box letting you know that the poll has been saved and successfully updated. Now, if I navigate back to my Outlook calendar, you will see that all of the holds have been removed and the only thing left are the scheduled events. Now you know how to use scheduling polls in Outlook. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.